it's Sandy Parker and welcome to crafting for almost everyone today we're going to do a pull-up it's a concertina type card that I saw on mixed up craft I hope you'll stay tuned the first thing we're going to do you need four strips of 12 inch by 2 inch tall paper and we're going to score these at 2 inches 4 inches 6 inches 8 inches and 10 inches. So they're scored at every, oh, got a little trouble there, every two inches. I already scored the other three and then we'll go on to the other papers you need. So then the next thing we're going to need is we're going to need a base of paper and my base is six and a quarter inches square. All this information is down below like it always is. And then uh, we're going to layer it with this paper that's six inches square. So if you have six inch uh, square paper pads, this would be a good project for that. Then I'm going to layer on the bottom with it a uh, paper underneath. This is going to be what you're going to write on. That's five and three quarters inches square. Then you're going to need, it depends on if you are going to do a sentiment or not. And I'm going to do a sentiment uh, going around all four sides. So you're going to need 16 of these that are one and a half inches square. And then you'll need four white ones that are one and a half inch square. Then you'll need 20 of these that you're going to layer those onto. And I'll show you that in just a second and these are one and three quarters inch square. You'll need 20 of those. Then you need two strips that are seven eighth inches by three and a quarter inches. So you need two of those. Then you're going to need a hole punch, well a circle punch, that punches out uh, one and a half inch bigger circle and a one inch little circle. That's what she used. I kind of think uh, maybe this should be a one and a quarter inch, but we'll play with that later. And then you need something that's going to punch out the center. I didn't have a very, very small circle. This is going to be what you put a ribbon through. So I'm going to use that punch, I think. But let me first um, glue some of these things down and then I'll come back so that you don't have to watch me. Because basically this card is all about gluing and uh, I don't want you to have to watch me do that. That'll bore you to death. I'll be back. So I've done three of the four of our strips. Get some mess out of the way. And I'll show you how to do the strips. You're going to want to fold it so that your first fold is down, up, down, up, down. So that you end up with M's. Or an M, M and M, all. And you want to make sure that this very bottom one you don't put anything on. So we're going to start at the top. Uh, other people said they fold that bottom one under but I didn't have any trouble remembering that. The thing I had trouble remembering was that the third one down is always going to be where I put my sentiment. So what I did it, with the ones that I've already done is I put the third one on first so I didn't forget and that saved me a lot of heartache because sometimes you get going on these and then all of a sudden you realize you didn't um, you know that you didn't put that one on so um, I'm just going to layer these on I'm only going to make you sit through one of them and then I made it so that my uh, ladybugs most of them are going in um, in an up and down direction like if you had if I had ones like this one where the center one is in a direction I tried to make it so the center one is going straight up and down you follow that I want it to point up like that now when you compose this or you put it all together um, obviously you're not going to see what this card looks like until I'm I've put it together but um, when you put this together it's kind of an interesting fold what you're going to do is you're going to take your bottom paper this is six by six so you're going to take a ruler and a pencil and we're going to turn this upside down 
no one's going to see this. It's going to be underneath. You want to make a mark at three inches going in both directions. Okay, then what you're going to do is you're going to take your strips and you're going to put the reverse side of this one. I got that confused. You're going to glue it so it goes like this. Okay? But you want to center it so that it's half on one side and half on the other side. So I'm going to use my same adhesive I was using. You can use wet adhesive because you might want to move this around a little bit. But the way I did it, I kind of already have it centered, or at least I hope you can see this, that I kind of have it centered. And I'm just going to lay it down like that. And then I'm going to turn it. And remember, you're going to, it's so that the pattern is on the front. So you're going to put it like this. So the pattern's on the front on this side. We're going to do the same thing. This is when it gets kind of tricky to play with because you're starting to get a lot of papers that are um, going to be flapping around for a little bit. So bear with it. It'll be fine. You just have to kind of give yourself a break. These should end up kind of touching each other like that. Mine aren't as, they should be closer together than that. It doesn't really matter, but that's kind of what you're aiming for. You can use wet glue. It's easier to line them up, I think, if you use wet glue, but it's completely up to you. Now I'm going to put my back on my, oh, look at that mess. I'm going to put the back on my um, black paper so that I have my lining in place. Okay. And I'm just going to try and line this up so it's kind of in the middle. And then you're going to put this like that. So you're going to put your glue on here. And then I'm going to use a little bit of wet glue just so I have some wiggle room on this because this is where I can mess up when you're gluing something really big down and it's got legs and arms and it's wobbling all over the place. So I want to be able to have some wet glue on here so that in the end I don't have the issue where it all sticks to the glue and I'm crying from it. Because I want this to be centered on my black piece if I can make this work. And you only have a quarter of an inch all the way around. Let me see if that looks right. That looks pretty good. Okay, so that's the base of our card. I know you're probably thinking, what about all these deals? Yeah, I know. They're uh, a little bit of a crazy, crazy mess. Okay. And then there's that one. Now, this is when we're going to be playing with these two pieces. We're going to glue them in the center so that we make a plus sign. Let me see if I can find something to lay on this so that it doesn't come flying back up. This is not going to be heavy enough. Oh, look, it is. Hard to believe. Shocking, even. Now, a lot of people use wet glue for this, but... Um, I really wanted to make sure it adhered right away, so I'm going to use wet glue and my tear tape just to make sure that my plus sign is kind of correct. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go in a half an inch from each end. I'm going to make a mark. So this is the half inch mark. You're going to put your glue up to that. I have made my marks at a half inch in on each of my four sides. Now I'm going to glue down the ones that are across from each other and I'm going to put them up to the line like that. And I, no one else has done this, but I'm doing this. I'm putting a 
clothespin on it. And then I'm going to do the other side again to my line, making sure that it's in the center that and hopefully they're straight and I'm just going to let them sit here for a second so that we're sure that they're stuck down and the set I use for my sentiments is from this hello set that's from Hampton Arts and I used um, I think I used just a note to say hello thinking of you uh, sending you hugs and maybe you make me smile I think. I think. And then I used some sequins that I just had in my stash. Oh, that's bad. It's crooked. I don't want it crooked. I'm going to move it back. It's still okay. And that one looks good. So then what we're going to do, these are the things that I struggled with when I was figuring out how to do this. I'm going to take this piece off and I'm going to show you the, the thing you need to do. You need to get your little uh, paper punch. The lady that I saw do this used um, long handled punches. I can't use those long handled punches. That's why this is becoming a dilemma for me. Here's what I'm going to do. Now this is not what other people did. This is what I'm going to do and if you have any problems with strength in your, in your arms, you're going to have to do it this way too. And that is, I am going to use my pokey tool, and I'm going to use a piece of fun foam underneath. Now I have to be able to get some ribbon through here, so I'm probably going to have to uh, poke this a few times, or at least a couple times. So let's go in the middle, and I'm just going to make um, like a... Um, maybe like an X almost because I want to be able to get my ribbon through here and I don't know any other way to do it. Okay, now let's go back to gluing this piece on that I struggled with before. Okay. It does not want to play, that is for sure. And then I'm going to turn it sideways and lay all these down. Alright, so our next step is to line up these ones. I'm going to put that one. I'm going to get this out of the way. And I'm just going to move that. I'm going to put that right there. Just lay that one down. My cross or T, X, whatever you want to call it, is not exactly straight. That doesn't bother me. It might bother you, but it doesn't bother me. Then we have the two circles that we laid on top of each other, and they are to hide our big mess here. So I'm going to lay something on these, lay a few things on there, hopefully to get it all to stay down. And uh, this time, I am going to use a hole punch, hopefully. Let's see if we can do it. Here it is. All right, I'm going to use a, kind of a thicker ribbon, and so I need a bigger hole. That's why I punched that little square. And let me grab my ribbon, and I'll be right back. You need a foot of ribbon. So I took a foot of this pink ribbon. The background on this is a pink, although the la ladybugs are red, the background is a pink color. And then what I want to do is I'm going to take the ends and I'm going to jab them through that little X with my pokey tool. Let me shove them through and I'll be right back. So I put my ribbon through the hole and then I trimmed the bottom. Now. I don't know if you can see this, but what I did was I put some tear tape on either side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one side of my ribbon, I'm going to lay it in this side of the tear tape just to make sure it doesn't come off. And if I have any that hangs over, I can always cut it off, but I wanted to make sure that I got as much of it laying on that as possible. 
Then I'm going to take the other side, uh, hopefully, I'll be able to find an angle where you can see this at. So then I'll take this side and I'll lay my ribbon in that. This makes sure, hopefully, that your ribbon stays attached to it and doesn't come off so that when you pull it like this, your um, your your whole um, piece doesn't come out. Your whole ribbon doesn't come out. So this is what it looks like when it comes in the mail and you should be able to put this in a regular envelope as long as you give it a little bit of extra space and you'll have to make your own envelope and I'll link how I make my own envelopes in case you don't have an envelope punch board but in this case I think I'm going to use one just because it'll be easier and then what you do is when they get it in the mail they're going to hold it up like this and uh, I don't know if you can see this one says sending you hugs this one says thinking of you this one says you make me smile and this one says just a note to say hello and I had a viewer that asked me if I would make a red and black inspired card for her and I hope that she likes it I'm going to send this to her in the mail and I hope all of you liked it too and that you give this a thumbs up and subscribe Please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.